Live from Shadowmere Studios, it's Talkie Box. I've fallen and I can't get up. Oh, man. I'm they not make helping medicine you. for that. Do they? Do they? They do. Is Ooh. it like a shot? <clears throat> I think so, yeah. A cortisone. Okay. Yeah, you just rub a little cortisone on it. That's, that's not what a shot means. A shot, like a, of tequila or uh-huh. cortisone. Or shotgun. How do, you get, how do you take your shots? El, El Corzo? Yeah, it's oh. like two fingers, <laughs> which is also a tequila. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I think two fingers is uh, how they measure tequila. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah we, I you think can we measure talking... just about any drink that way. <clears throat> you can measure almost anything with two fingers. Yeah. So, like, eight two fingers? Yeah. Can you do that? Okay. I guess you would just go with 16 fingers. I, I don't have that many. Yeah. You would need a friend. Because <laughs> toes don't count. No, no. no they're different not the unit of measurement. Now, yeah. You know the old, uh, the old American... Uh, rule system, uh, measuring system. The yeah, uh, system. Yeah, no, it was uh, uh, feet ninjas. Feet ninjas. Feet yeah. ninjas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're uh, they're all based off of off of the crown. Like an inch used to be the thumb of the king. Oh, okay. From yeah. the knuckle to the, like the tip. Right. And so the imperial measuring system changed uh, as the monarchy changed. Hmm. So like. You know. So every time like there was a new monarch, they had to go and like start measuring their body parts. Yeah. They're like okay, this is the new inch. And then that that got you know to be ridiculous. What if that person like got like a lot of times there was a child that would become king. So like what like would it change Shit as would they get small as the, as that child grew up? Would it? Yeah, they probably faced all of those problems, <laughs> and eventually somebody just came up and was like, yo, we got to just establish... <laughs> this is an inch. It's me. I'm the king, <laughs> and this is going to be it from now on. Yeah. King's decree. I don't know which king it was. I'm going to say George. Yeah, a George. Maybe a Philip. Or a Walter. <laughs> was there? If there wasn't a King Walter, there should have been. Uh, okay. All right. That's just... <laughs> hey. I'm allowed to have an opinion about other countries' monarchs. That's true. Th- yep. <laughs> I mean, England has a, an opinion about our current monarch. Um, oh, we don't... Okay, you never mind. <laughs> so, um, how have you guys been? You've been good? Yeah, been all right. Good? How are you? I haven't, you? How, I haven't how, broken how, any new bones this week. Not so. a new one? No. Any no? old ones? No. I haven't broken any bones this week as far as I'm aware. <laughs> well, that's the but, way to live on the sunny side of life, Dave. Don't break That's any a hell bones. of a product placement there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get all of my product placement skills from Wayne's World. Yeah? I don't know if you guys have seen it. Hey, what uh, time is it? What time is what? What time is it right now? Let me check. Ah, uh, shit. <laughs> uh, if only there were numbers. You know, that's not a working It's talkie talk. box time. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. All the time. Yeah. It's always talking about it. I'm 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 ashamed of myself. You should be. I'm I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed for you. Yeah, that wasn't I shouldn't <laughs> have I'm sorry guys. <laughs> oh man. Does it keep it colder? I it hear that does. the talkie box uh, is actually a better insulator than non-talkie box. Yeah, so if yes. you're drinking cold things out of it, it they it's, stay colder. It's, it's ice cold, and, possibly. And hot things as well. If uh-huh. you're into cocoa, mm-hmm. there is no better cocoa. Then talkie box mug cocoa. Yeah. Cocoa box. Yes. With a little whipped cream. Uh, well, yeah. Now, well, talkie box that. brand cocoa is still currently under development, so just yeah. start with the mug. Patent pending. Yeah. 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 Uh, we only use um, dark beans. D- do we? Okay. Yeah. Antioxidants. <laughs> yeah, we definitely have those in there. Yeah, it's important. They're everywhere. Yeah. Oh, man. So, uh, did you hear something... Kind of crazy happened. Uh, uh, Heinz Ketchup, all right? Mm-hmm. Heinz, the company. Yeah. Uh, they have effectively trolled the city of Chicago. How so? So uh, in Chicago, one of the foods that they're most known for is what? Deep hot dish dogs. pizza. That, yes, and hot dogs. Yeah. Now, as much as they love hot dogs, the general consensus is in Chicago, you don't put ketchup on hot dogs. Oh, really? It's, yeah, it's just not allowed. You can put mustard and relish and onions and everything else under the sun. No ketchup. But it's like a cultural faux pas to put ketchup on a hot dog. They're not going to like me. Ketchup is kind of a, a southern... Kind of, yeah. Thing. Well, what, it, what, what Heinz not did... 100%, but yeah. All right. I'm, it's more of a condiment of the south. 
So moving into the summer seasons, Mm -hmm. hot dogs typically sell a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So ketchup normally sells a little bit better, except for in Chicago. Their, Their market share in Chicago wasn't as good as the rest of the country. Right. So they uh, they released something there uh, in a blue and white package called a Chicago Dog Sauce. <laughs> and this stuff flew off the shelves. Yeah. Incredibly popular. People were putting it all over their hot dog. Chicago Dog Sauce, they said, who knew? Right. Turns out, Chicago Dog Sauce is it equal sign Heinz Ketchup different <laughs> label. Yeah. That sounds pretty awesome. Burned them. Yeah. How does Chicago take that when they figure it out that oh, <laughs> I this don't is what think Chicago is. has released an official statement on it yet, right. but I'm I'm gonna keep my ear to the ground I want on that. The, one. I want to hear from the mayor of Chicago on this. Be like, yeah. we think this is a disgrace. <laughs> How dare you trick us into putting delicious ketchup on our hot dogs? What's great is that nobody realized what it was coming out. I mean, did they? Change the color or the consistency or anything? It was Heinz ketchup inside. All they did was the change the packaging to say Chicago dog sauce, and it's uh, white and light blue instead of red. So, th- like, the actual product is white and light br- blue. No, the, no, the package, package is. Okay, so it's yeah. it's still ketchup. It's, I don't know if I want to put it, white and red light ketchup. blue sauce on my... I've seen green ketchup, I feel. Yeah, I, I have too, yep. I feel like I've seen crazy ketchups. But I feel like that didn't sell that well. I, no, because people don't like it when you mess it's with weird. stuff like that. No. I mean, we're not kids. It's you know? like, like... You don't need to put rainbow colors yeah, in our food. Yeah, Crystal Clear Pepsi didn't do that great, Mm-mm. even though it tasted fine. Yep. Uh, Pepsi Blue didn't do well, but Pepsi Blue I thought was pretty good. I don't know if I ever had Pepsi Blue. Mountain Dew Code Pepsi Blue. Red. Code Red does great. I hate it. Really? Oh, yeah, a lot of people it's love it. licorice. I do not care. I love Mountain Dew. Yeah. Georgia loves Dew, and I agree. Mm. But Code Red <laughs> is right out. See, Mountain Dew Voltage is my favorite Mountain Dew. Is that the that's purple? The bl- that's the light blue one. Oh, okay, it's the light blue It's one. really good. Weird. But, yeah, I don't know... Uh, I don't know. I don't understand why they wouldn't want ketchup on their hot dogs in the first place. It's, it's just weird. one of those cultural things. It's, but it's weird. Yeah, I don't get it. Like if you go, if you ever go to, um, I want to say it's Nathan's. Like they have a few mm. hot dog restaurants. Yeah, they do not serve ketchup in those restaurants. Yes, they do. They do absolutely. Well, then maybe it's and just the one in Chicago because I've been to the Nathan's famous famous hot dogs on Coney Island where they do the the hot dog eating contest, and I got ketchup, mayonnaise, and mustard on my hot dog like I always do. Well, then it might be either the one just in Chicago or some other famous hot dog that chain. Could be it. Yeah, now but Heinz no makes ketchup. a mustard, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I'm sure they sell plenty of mustard. Like it's not like people are eating naked dogs. No. no. They're still saucing up their The, their the dog. Chicago dog, that's typically got like what, coleslaw on it? Is that the Chicago no, dog? It's, it's Carolina, I think. I feel like the, mm. co- the Chicago dog has like pepperoncinis, maybe? Uh, you got the magic box? Look it up. Let's look it up on the magic box. I feel like it's uh, it's either coleslaw or it's... Uh, I thought it was damn, just mustard know. relish onion on a Chicago dog. Maybe it's relish and onion I'm thinking of. It's, yeah. yeah. I th- but I, you know, I could be wrong. Maybe it's a relish thing. I, that's something I've never really got into was relish, and I love pickles, but but in a relish, I'm not really don't really dig it. Yeah. See, I would have. I mean, their their idea is great. It obviously worked. I would have probably just tried to like create a ketchup relish or okay. something that was like a Chicago style hot dog. Uh, is uh, all beef frankfurter on a poppy seed bun. Okay. With yellow mustard, chopped white onions, bright green sweet pickle relish, a dill yeah. pickle spear, tomato slices or wedges, and pickled sport peppers, and a dash of celery salt. That's, that's kind of, I'm running that's out a of lot of stuff, man. Uh, yeah, there, that's, there's, there's, that's an intense dog. Tomato yeah. wedges yeah. or slices, apparently. Yeah, I mean, let's see if I can't. Uh, I, do, I do remember the pickle spear being on it. Though. Yeah. The the white onion I'm, I feel odd about because I'm like there you yellow have onion it. maybe but there you have it you got your Chicago style dog right yeah. there and uh, they didn't leave oh, any okay, room yeah, for ketchup that, that bright green relish I've seen that at some places uh, at like uh, Quick Trip and stuff Quick Trip yeah they'll uh, have that for their hot dogs there and it just it looks like fake food of some <laughs> sort <laughs> it like, does. It, it's too green yeah far too green way like too green leprechaun salsa yeah exactly. I like that. Leprechaun, Leprechaun salsa? salsa? Yeah, have you ever had it? No. 
Oh, it's magically delicious. You should try it on your dog. Uh, apparently. I thought you just made that up just now. I did. Oh. And he backed me up, and then you fell for it. Oh, you got me. <laughs> Bazinga. <laughs> so, um, I had a topic for yeah. the day. Yeah, what would you want to talk about? I wanted to talk about, and it's a, it's a large topic. Is winter fun? Winter fun. <laughs> All right. I wanted to talk about getting trapped in a snowstorm. Oh, All right. Okay. Those I are my favorite awful stories. I'm going to tune out for a while. Conspiracy theories. Oh. Uh, right. I can't do well, all I that. Get, I get mixed emotions <laughs> from uh-huh. you guys. Um, so let's start off with the first conspiracy theory that I can think of. Aliens. Yeah. Huh? Sigourney Weaver. You love her? <laughs> Tell me, Dave. Yeah, I think she's fantastic. I do too. Yeah. But what I, do you think about is that a theory? Is that a conspiracy theory that she's yeah. fantastic? No, that's a, an accepted. That's a fact. It's, it's an, an accepted <laughs> fact. It's an accepted fact. Uh, but do you believe in aliens? Uh, not necessarily in the way that they're portrayed in the media a lot, but I definitely believe that there is life of some sort outside of our planet. Do you believe in sentient life outside of our planet? I definitely don't rule that out. Given how much universe there is, I can't say that there's not sentient life out there. Uh, a lot of I know a lot of people. Their 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 thing against that is that if there was sentient life out there, why haven't they found us yet? And that's a really stupid way to put it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, considering you, how much of the sky we've charted. Yeah. So why why do you we assume, haven't found them yet? Why do you assume that they're more advanced than we are? And and why do you assume? That they haven't found us, and we're like, "Fuck that planet." And why do you assume that uh, that uh, they, you know, they could have found us in the time allotted so far? Yeah. So, what what about you, Justin? You you believe in aliens? You you think that we are alone in this universe, or you think that there are things out there? And I absolutely I, no. There's no way that the, we're alone. I'm 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 gonna say. Do I believe that aliens have touched base in Roswell, or I was going to uh, get to that? Was going to be the next part of the question, right? We establish whether we believe, and yeah. then we establish I believe, do we think that we've been visited, because that's the conspiracy theory. I think most people believe that a it's a statistical improbability that we are the only f- source of life right. in all the universe. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, as far as sentient life, well. That's A, assuming that we actually even understand our own sentience. Right. And and B, that like, it, it's it's out there. Yeah. It's out there for sure. The truth is out there. Right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> there, there's actually been a few books now. They're fictional books, obviously. But uh, like Michael Crichton's work a lot, uh, a couple of bo- his books have, have dealt with uh, extraterrestrial life, like Andromeda Strain and Sphere. Which are two fantastic books, movie not terrible, but uh, <laughs> they they go into how um, the the possibility of, of alien life existing, but not not in the way that we would think of it. Like maybe they, you know, we we more or less exist in three dimensions. Uh, maybe they exist in eight, you know, and so we wouldn't even be able to comprehend most of that being. Um, and then you know the obviously that you know uh, if there is life out there, there's there's definitely going to be like just like we have here, you know, monocellular organisms, bacteria, and you know, right. Same thing would have to be out there, I would assume. I mean, there's a lot of different interesting theories about um, dimensions and and how they can like how they have to be perceived. Mm-hmm. You know, in a single dimension, which would be a single point, you have to have at least two dimensions to perceive one dimension. You have to have at least sure. three dimensions in order to perceive two dimensions. Yeah. So in order to perceive like a full third dimension, you have to have those other dimensions in mind. You have to, you Which, can't build a third dimension without a second dimension and so yeah. on and so forth. So people, there's this whole debate about whether or not time is the fourth dimension. Mm-hmm. I was listening to this very interesting theory about uh, it's not so much that time is the fourth dimension so much as just like temporal, like the fourth dimension is a temporal dimension. Okay. And 
the life span of any one like atom atom or object can be viewed on like this entire plane that almost looks like a snake when it's all said and done it's a very it's a very interesting video okay. i can't do it any justice by by prattling on about right. it um but it's it's interesting to think about aliens from a different type of dimension mm. than what we live in yeah now, do you believe that we have been visited by sentient life of some kind? I would say sentient life in the capacity that, you know, we think about aliens, you know, just beings from another planet visiting ours, probably not. I feel like, once again, it's a, it's a statistical unlikelihood. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think if there is alien life out there that is sentient in the way that we know it, they probably haven't been here yet. I am under the impression that that they have not mm. actually been here, but I do believe that we have been probed uh, through machinations of some kind. Uh, Possibly, you know, I, I can't even assume in what capacity just like a weather balloon to us you know but to them you know they they may be at a level where they could very easily send out yeah. unmanned spacecraft that could report back to them findings i mean we've done that like we have we have you know unmanned craft going out out into our solar system not out of it yet um I don't think we have. I think what what's the farthest we've gone? Like Jupiter? Is a... uh, I think we just passed. In terms of like manned spacecraft, no, 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 no. no the, in terms of like manned actually, spacecraft hasn't passed the moon. No, so. uh, we're. I think it. We just passed uh, Saturn. Okay. Saturn, I believe, was uh, the one we just got photos back from uh, Voyager. Okay. So, if. Let's say that that if there is sentient alien life out there, that it started at the same time that we that that humanity did. Okay. Well, here's here's the thing to think about. Okay. Um, I would say that if you believe in the Big Bang theory and you know that worlds just happen to form along the same timeline and that sort of thing, you know, cooling and and warming, adding water and things like that that life would need mm -hmm. um you have to remember that the earth has had several world ending yeah cataclysms and so if a planet actually like if a group started to become life force around the dinosaur like the paleozoic era and stuff like that and evolved non-stop from that point right you know they would there's a chance they could be a little more evolved than us. I wouldn't, yeah. put them, I wouldn't put it more than about 500 to 1,000 years of evolution just because there were mammals, you mm -hmm. know, back during the dinosaur era. And obviously there they, were. they survived that whole asteroid impact thing and they became us. Yeah. So, you know, we were evolving back there, but I'm sure there were like... There were some stagnation in, yeah. at, at different intervals where, like, we just weren't being pushed or we were being pushed too hard that we had to, like, just bunker up in caves for 500 years right. or whatever. So I could I could picture give or take life in the universe is going to be around us, yeah. but within 500 to 1,000 years of mm. technology. And if... Alien life had actually sent probes that had landed. It could explain to some degree the exponential growth of the technology industry. Now, I know that's a little ridiculous, <laughs> yep. but I am I am talking about uh, conspiracy theory, here. right? Yeah, absolutely, so, that's true. So I we're just, talking about aliens, so we can't. Uh... You know, you know what I could do though is is uh, let's say that there was some alien material or some sort. That did land here. That could explain uh, how fucked up Australia is with their crazy animals, with their marsupials and their deadly everything. Yep, the duck-faced platypus. Yeah, their duck-faced <laughs> women. Oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, 
just a slap in the face of an entire nation's gender. Very good, Dave. We're really, I'm proud of you. The, the, no, the I'm proud of you. Entire planet's uh, duck face population. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, that one. No, oh, except God. that's worse. Slap him. <laughs> so, uh-huh. aliens, right? Um, Maybe, you know, <laughs> probably, but probably not here. Yeah, we'll agree. Probably, but probably yep. not here. But probably yeah. not here. All right, what else you got? Uh, what else? Yeah. Um, how about something really deep? Deeper than aliens. Deeper the than ocean. Because people like aliens. Uh, the ocean's real deep. I was going to say 9-11. 9-11. 9-11. 9-11. Here we go. Yeah, that's the start of a lot of conspiracy theories in our time. That's powerful, right? Yeah. You just say those two numbers together. 9-11. Mm-hmm. And, we and have to be careful about some of these conspiracy theories now because if this gets out, we might have some dangerous people on our backs. If they're true. Well, Mark- yeah. <laughs> but wouldn't that be great for Talkie Box? It would be <laughs> so if good. We're assassinated. Yeah, in- that would explicably. That would be the best. I think so, right? Like our yeah. numbers would go up. They, All right. Well, true. Jason, tell us about the research that you <laughs> did. <laughs> All right. Um. So nine eleven. Uh huh. Uh, is a big conspiracy theory. Some uh-huh. people believe that you know it. I mean, nine eleven itself is not a conspiracy theory. There like, are a lot of nine eleven was a date theories. that happened. <laughs> but believe it or not, there are some people who believe that it did not happen, really? and that's one of the, the whole day did not happen. It didn't happen. It doesn't just happen like, any year at all. Just like Holocaust deniers. But I digress. Right. Um. So, a lot of the people Holocaust happened. Don't be a dick. Believe that nine eleven was completely staged, and there is yeah. actually an almost insurmountable. Uh, amount of of proof hmm. on this subject, all from the the planes to the buildings, a bunch of different physics dynamics that just yeah. don't make sense. But before I get into any of that controversial craziness, I just want to ask you: Do you think nine eleven was a terrorist act from Muslim radicals? Or do you believe it was something else? It was definitely a terrorist act. Uh, it was definitely a terrorist yeah. act because people were regardless terrorized. regardless of who did it. It was a terrorist act. Um, Muslim radicals, I think, were definitely involved. I don't. I don't know. Like, I don't have a, like a, hu- a huge opinion on the whole thing. Um, I think it was a terrible tragedy that occurred, and I don't know. And we'll probably never know who was completely responsible for everything of it or even everything that happened there's been even even there's been cover-ups almost definitely some sort of cover-ups as to as to what all happened um you know phone calls that were deleted you know recordings that were deleted and stuff like that uh because i feel that there was a if if it was a completely muslim radical thing i think there was definitely warnings that were ignored if it uh was a government conspiracy that's fucked up, but I I don't I don't know. I, don't know. I think there are a lot of up in the air topics. So you've you've decided to not decide. Yeah, pretty much. If you choose because not to decide, you still have made a choice. Sure. I mean, all right. Yeah, so <clears throat> let me kind of put a bug in everybody's ear on. Something else. It's not necessarily uh, a solid opinion of mine. It's not something that I necessarily believe wholeheartedly, but it's something to think about. Uh, There's a documentary out there uh, called uh, The Propaganda Game, Mm -hmm. and it's on Netflix, or at least it was, and it's about uh, North Korea. Um, And basically what you see in it is how these people are guarded from information in a very, very major way. The information they receive Mm -hmm. is very limited. There's always a spin on it. Um, and essentially they're not allowed or they're not given access to anything other than what they are supposed to believe. Right. So let's, let's say hypothetically for a second that, uh, all of the information we receive is also put through a filter Mm -hmm. and the reasons why things are the way that they are, uh, might be the result of that filter. 
are the nations out there that we fight, are we fighting them for the reasons that we say we're fighting them for? Uh, is there ulterior, ulterior motives to something like the 9-11 attack or, um, you know, just the, the various different catastrophes and war zones that have happened over the years? Mm -hmm. Is the information we're getting just completely filtered and retwisted so that we have the opinions we're supposed to have? Or are we legitimately given all of the information and we're allowed to form our opinions accordingly? Uh, I feel, given given that the internet is a thing that we have access to... This is true. And, and such an oversaturation of information, I think that uh, I think that's exactly what's happened is that we've been oversaturated with with information to misdirect as to what legitimate legitimately is has happened I mean I think that with media you know you do run the risk of only getting access to certain things like the Chicago dog saw story I have personally no way to verify that story short of going to Chicago mm -hmm. and finding a bottle of Chicago dog sauce, right. which I would buy and bring back with me, and I'd cherish it forever. <laughs> but <laughs> aside from if that... If you live I, in Chicago and you want to send us a bottle... Please do. Oh, my God. Email. That'd we'll be get you, awesome. We'll get you an address. I mean, I mean get, get the ketchup the hell out of your state, right? <laughs> the dog oh. sauce. <laughs> the, the, yeah. um, but not a, a, a vast majority... Of the population does not have the means mm. to fact check right. and verify, so we 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 take everything yeah. as as fact. We don't look at everything with a grain of salt, and uh, I think sometimes that's how people become misguided. Yeah, and how you get misinformation out there, fake news, fake news, fake news. <laughs> it's everywhere. It it is. It is, and and a lot of the reporting on the nine eleven incident was in the moment, and you know it's it's hard to to give accurate detailed information when you're experiencing a shocking oh, yeah. situation. You know, you're you're trying to maintain some neutrality in an event like that, uh, as far as journalism is concerned, but it's. It's impossible. Right. So, you know, the moment you begin to feel attacked and threatened, like at that point, you know, you're willing to take on what inf whatever information is given to you that makes the most sense. Um, the A lot of the, the stuff that I have seen is, A, there's a big conspiracy about uh, there not even being planes. Yeah. Um, now I watched a thing that was that made it a, a fact that there is actually something in the air on that flight path. Like it took every bit of footage that that there was made of the second plane hitting the second tower, and it it lined it up with the flight path that was part of the released report. Uh -huh. um, the the issue that this particular scientist had with it was the actual impact dynamics of mm -hmm. the plane made no sense. Uh, and a lot of people, a lot of scientists call them cartoon impact dynamics uh, because it almost looks like the plane is just sort of absorbed into the building. Mm -hmm. There's no shearing of aluminum. There's no... The, the wings are basically like 50 pounds of super light aluminum and should have just sheared off of the plane and fall into the ground rather than actually breaking through the four foot thick steel girder beams and there was no shock wave like windows didn't shatter all like for several stories up and several stories down as they should have the, the impact dynamics are pretty much akin to that of a rocket okay but everything all the pictures and everything all show it to be some kind of a plain looking thing mm -hmm. but it just it doesn't make any sense how it goes into the building and how it actually leaves wing impact impact marks like the wings sheared through uh, another issue 
that could be explained with downward momentum, but that kind of jumbo jet, mm -hmm. it does not reach the speed that the, the speed was clocked at of that plane hitting the second tower. The speed was clocked at like 580 miles an hour or something like that. And the jets, the, the twin jets that push that jumbo jet, they cannot, at that low of an altitude, gain that much speed. Now, I think that it's it could be possible if they were flooring it and coming downward. Yeah. Uh, but generally, at that kind of altitude, in order for them to just maintain a speed, I think it's like 400 miles an hour tops. Like In order to get to the 550, 580, you got to get way in the upper atmosphere where there's a lot less air friction. Uh, so the speeds weren't right. The impact wasn't right. The There's a secondary explosion uh, after the initial impact. Like mm -hmm. you see the initial impact explosion and then a secondary explosion behind it that just doesn't really make sense. Like one of the one of the fuel cells or whatever and one of the wings that shouldn't have even made it into the building mm -hmm. blew up secondary. Like... It doesn't make sense that there would be a secondary explosion. There was talk about the the heat on the girders not being enough. Like the jet fuel doesn't burn hot enough to make the, the as clean of cuts in the in the girders that they did. And as as high as both of those impacts were, it is it doesn't make any physical sense for the whole building for the, to collapse for both both entire buildings to fall completely in. Like it is. It said that. To experts, it, it looked more like a controlled demolition. Right. So that it wouldn't take out all of those other buildings, that two enormous buildings shearing off and falling yeah. off in crazy directions. Like, A, these are either the most thoughtful terrorist Muslims ever, or they tried to do this so that there would be the very least amount of residual damage. Now, with, with, with that particular point, I've heard, and I have no way of proving this to be true or not, uh, but I've heard that that's the way the buildings were designed. They were designed that in the case of something, whatever, they would they would collapse down rather than over. So, I and, don't know. And, I mean, t to an extent, I can see that. But at what point does the building call it quits on that many levels? I mean, like, you've seen it, right? You've seen it, like, yeah. just collapsing in on itself. Like, oh, the weight from this just crushed the entire building. But... It just doesn't. It doesn't seem to make sense to me. Yeah. Also, you you mentioned that there were some omissions, some records that had Likely. been yeah. deleted and things. That's that's a big thing. Um, another fact that I found, or or scientific anomaly that I found, was that the closed circuit camera <laughs> footage from uh, the airport, mm -hmm. uh, where those tuz the Muslims, you know, because they they showed us the list of like, these are the people we believe did this. And right. it's like, you know, the FBI's top 20 or whatever. And it's like every bearded guy on that picture. <laughs> yeah. And, and eventually you come to find out like some of those people are still alive. Like mm. the faces that they gave us, some of them weren't even in the country. Um, they just gave us faces. Right. And, and there's no closed circuit camera television footage from the airport of any of those guys getting onto these planes. Hmm. Mm. Like all of the closed circuit television camera footage has been either like destroyed or lost or or doesn't show anything. Right. And and I just feel like why why would that you know, if this were plain fact, if this were truth, if this were not just a way for us to go to Afghanistan then why wouldn't they just be freely giving us these faces, giving us this information? Like, if it were true, there just wouldn't be so much wagging the dog behind it. Yeah. And, and I was in the Marine Corps at the time. And, I mean, now I could probably get killed for this, but uh, we were running maneuvers. We were preparing for something, like we were preparing to go to war. We had we had picked up like a bunch of extra exercises and stuff like that. We were doing a lot more desert training. And 
And then like about five months after we started all these extra regiments, the trade centers fell and we were going to Afghanistan like the next week. Hmm. Yeah, so, Jason's definitely getting killed for that. Yeah. Um, so, so just, Dave, you want to talk about something else? <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's heavy. It's some heavy material. Yeah. But it's a conspiracy yeah. theory. I might be out of my gourd. I might not have any idea. You might not I'm even have about. a gourd. I might not even. It That's might be the great true. pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Nope. No. No. Mm-hmm. No. Not that. So, what uh, other Anything conspiracy theories? Uh, have you heard about the conspiracy theory regarding the Fed and um, like the banking institute? Yes, the Federal Reserve. Yes, the yeah. Federal Reserve and the um, oh, what's the name of that family? It's the most powerful family in the world. They're the um, the Roth the Rothschilds. Um, no, that's not right. <laughs> that, that sounds right. Does it? Rothschild? Yeah. That sounds like a thing. I think Rockefeller? Those, that, that's a name, the Rothschilds. The Rothschilds. Um, essentially what the, the, the whole theory is is that um, all of the all of the money, I well, part of this is not a theory, part of it's just plain fact. Mm. Uh, the Federal Reserve is a separate entity from the United States government. Yeah. Um, and it is responsible for uh, printing and producing our money. Okay. Now, it produces our money for us, and then it loans us that money at interest. Mm -hmm. The only issue is, is that if they make our money, how can we repay back that money? With someone else's money. With interest. With someone else's money, right? Where do we get this someone else's money from? It it doesn't really matter, but then we're going to owe them money. Essentially, the Fed uh, is a perpetual debt machine. Yeah. It forces not only the nation, but also its citizens to be in a constant and perpetual state of debt. That's not a conspiracy theory at all. That's, that's, that's fact. fact. Yeah, par- part of that is fact. American economy is based on a cycle of debt where four out of five people can pay, and that one out of five person just gets crapped on for their entire life. Correct. Now, the theory is is that uh, that federal bank um, has, you know, th- there are other different banks that are that follow the same system around the country. I mean, not around the country, but around the globe. Um, and that, uh, you know, the World Bank Organization, things like that are all a part of this overall system to encourage debt for the purposes of control. And that when you look at the map of the world... Uh, the typical enemies of the state, those countries that uh, that we fight against, that you know have that we have slights against for whatever reason may be, North Korea, um, you know the various Middle Eastern countries, things like that, Iran. are all countries that are not a part of any one of these banking systems. And when we do go into a country, like over the last 20 years or so, the countries that we have gone into and fought these wars and then like left afterwards are now a part of these banking organizations when they weren't before. So the the idea is is that the Fed and all of these other uh, multinational banks uh, that create the, the funds for the countries are actually the ones pulling the strings in terms of war to get more under their control, and then the more they have under their control, the more they can in debt, the more they can control. And apparently it's all being run by the Rothschilds. Hail Hydra. Thank you. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, I actually, I don't know, the conspiracy, I guess, is that it is being run by a select, uh, you know, super 1% family. Yes. and Because the, all the rest of those things are true facts that yes. you said. Like, A, money runs the war machine, runs the world, and, you know, uses that to collect more resources so that they could cycle it through again. Right. I mean, that's... but In terms of, like, you know, the, the, the enemies of the state are the ones that are not a part of these interconnected multinational banks, and those are the real reasons why we pursue them, not because necessarily these 
civil rights violations or this, that, or the other thing, that that's the information that we're being fed through a filter so that we get on board with these invasions and we get on board with, you know, taking down these leaders because we believe that there are these atrocities occurring when in reality it's just because we need them under our control as much as everybody else. Yeah. That's the conspiracy part. See, I like the metaphor of the, the whole uh, Matrix. Morpheus offers you a red pill and a blue pill. And like most all of these first world nations, they all took that pill that makes them think their country's the best. And like, like go us and everything is great as long as you're with us. Uh, and then like everybody else took that pill that's kind of like, oh, wait. We're actually one global humanity, and we should all be looking out for each other. Like, we shouldn't be controlling each other for greedy purposes and stuff like that. And those people are the ones we try to kill. <laughs> yep. Yeah, because they are, they are messing up the system. But see, now, there, there's alternate theories there, too, where uh, perhaps we're trying to get all of this control or the you know these banks are trying to control everyone for the purposes of debt and for power and control. Whereas there's this, there's other alternative theory that, uh, the whole purpose of fighting these wars and getting everybody under this one big umbrella is to create a world government and get everybody on the same page and start doing away with war. But the jury's still out and knowing the world, the way that I know it, uh, I would, I would lead towards greed. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Like if if we were really doing it for the people, then there would already be a a single basic uh, global government that all they did was basically just like education, healthcare, and like exploratory and stuff like that, you know. And then everybody else would be a republic. All these countries would just be states of the great nation of Earth. Yeah, and they would be governed just like the states in the United States are, whereas you have a governor that dictates like, oh, well, we need a little more help in education here, or we need a little more agricultural, you know, right. aid here, whereas, you know, that way it's not just one super, you know, uh, government, super government that's just controlling everything. I was trying yeah. to think of something fancier, like oligarchy, but like a dictatorship. Yeah, but I couldn't come up with anything good, like like oligarchy like or dictatorship. All right. So, so yeah. Now we don't talk about politics. That doesn't mean we can't talk about government. <laughs> it's not the same thing. We no, don't. Ha we don't have a thing. horse in this race. Yeah. Unless this race is the human race. Not a horse race. Uh, not a horse race. Yeah. Have you guys ever watched the Kentucky Derby? No. No? What about the Preakness? No. Nope. Know what that or one is. the Belmont Stakes. What about the nope. Be What about the Belmont Stakes? Nope. No. Oh man. So have you ever seen any kind of a race? Uh, not a horse race. You, a, any any kind of race? Yes. I've participated in some race. races. <laughs> Are you telling me you've never seen Sea Biscuit? Nope. I haven't seen Sea Biscuit. Wow. Yeah. Man's been living under a rock. Secretariat? Nope. Wow. What do you do? I don't watch movies about horses, apparently. No. <laughs> Seems that way. Well. Black Beauty? No. 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 Black Stallion? No. What else you got? What other horse movies you got? I'm, I'm running low on horse movies. <laughs> They're <laughs> out there. Um, the Last nope. Unicorn? <laughs> I actually haven't seen that. You haven't I seen should that? see that one. Yeah, I've, I've heard good things. but That's a good one. Yeah, my, my, my Little Pony? No. It'll make you cry. What? Last unicorn. You're not a oh. You you you're not a brony. Not a brony. Are you sure? Yep. That ponytail looks awful nice. It's actually in a bun right now. Right. I stand by my statement. Yeah, it's in a bun right now. I stand by my statement. Yeah. So what about you, Justin? I have seen. Uh, and I don't know if you guys have even heard of this. Uh, have you heard of Riverdale? That sound familiar to you at all? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? Well, the Riverdale that I know uh -huh. uh, is, uh, I think, uh, there's this new show right. based off of uh, Archie characters. Yes. Only it's a murder mystery. Holy shit. And it's called Riverdale. Yeah. Have I thought about that before? No. no. Yeah. So have you watched it? Yeah. Oh, man. It's crazy. 
it's, on the Netflix? It's, it's on, on the Netflix. Netflix. It's, yeah. it's, they took, like, they, they, I guess they wanted to make a show, like a sort of a teen drama type show, and have it, like, just be kind of really dark, and then they just filled it with the Archie characters. So Archie, Betty, Veronica, Jughead, like some of them are there. really ridiculous, and it's it's um, amazing, like that they they could have done anything, they could have made this whole new thing, and like let's do it with Archie, let's see how that goes, and I think it works. I watched the the entire first season, and it's like, and it's not your, it's not your, the Archie comics that that you grew up on. Like it starts out with a murder, like it's a murder mystery is the the main the main part of the, the series. Uh, you find out, I think, in the first episode that one of the students is sleeping with a teacher. Um, there may, you know, there it's 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 just so crazy. They 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 basically they, they they basically take like a, a teen murder mystery TV show, yeah, and then they put like a pretty Archie skin on uh-huh. top of it, like your your Jughead character. Uh, he wears the hat, yep. but it's like a woven beanie style hat with like the little crown mm-hmm. pieces sticking up, and I think it's played by the one of the kids who was it's, in a uh, Big it's Daddy. Cole Sprouse, yeah, yeah, who was he was in Big Daddy. Yeah, um, the the guy the guy who plays Archie, his hair is ridiculous. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and say that his hair is ridiculous. Yeah. It seems to me like somebody was batting around the idea of bringing Scooby Doo up. And sort they were, of, and they were like, "No, oh, that's tired and yeah. cliche." But let's take something from that era. Yep. Let's take something from the fifties, forties, or whatever. And it's, and, and it's not just the Archie gang. Josie and the Pussycats are in it too. They are. They yeah. are. The Josie and the Pussycats are in there. Yeah, and they and they play the so- the song. The Josie's a sugar. total bitch. Eh, not the whole time, but yeah, okay. she kind of is. She's um, but they they do the the song by the Archies, "Sugar." Was it Sugar Sugar? I think it was the name of the song. Oh, honey, honey. Yeah, nope. that one. Bum, 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 that's bum. the one. Yeah, they play that in the in the show. Remember, now, not too many beats, man. Like, I no, first found out about this. Reel it in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sampling it. <laughs> yeah. I found. I first found out. About, uh, Jason probably knows. I don't know if you know. I got this thing called Comic Bento. I know uh, about this. Yeah, I started a couple, what, two years ago now or something. And it's if you haven't checked it out, it's it's actually pretty awesome. Um, every month. I get a box of comics in the mail. Like, I don't pick them. It's just whatever this company decides to give me. It's like graphic novels. It's anywhere from four to six of them. And one of the ones I got a couple months ago was called Road to Riverdale. And it, it was like, blah, blah, blah. New take on Archie, blah, blah, blah. And I was like... And it said, uh, soon to be a, a series on television, on the CW. And I didn't think anything of it until I happened to see it on Netflix. I was like, I got to check this book out. And... The book is nothing like the show. It turns out, like the 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 cover of the book looks just like the characters from the show, but inside it's basically just regular old Archie again. It's a little bit updated to be in modern times rather than the, stuck in the fifties or whatever it was before. But yeah, it was really odd. Huh. The road to Riverdale. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, what would you put? Out? 60s, maybe? 50s or 60s? I feel like it was the 50s. That sounds about I right. Remember, I but... feel like the clothing is reflective of, like, happy days. Yeah. When was happy days? Happy days set? took place in the 50s. Was it the 50s? Yeah, yeah. it sure okay. was. So then it we'll was, say it was the 50s. Happy days was shot in the 70s, right? Yes. Yeah. Shot it took in the place 70s. in the 50s. Yeah. Um, Good stuff. But yeah, like it's, that it's, 70s show. It's big, you know, leather, uh, not leather, um, letter jackets is a big thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sort of, you know, the the. I never understood Jughead's like hat because I've never seen one like it. And then when I was watching the show, I'm like, "Oh, so that's how they decided to do it." You know yeah. what? I don't disagree. There's it a, plays. It's a really funny part in the show because the the show mixes like real real good humor with some real dark undertones and and some teen drama with a moral at the end of the show kind of stuff it's it they incorporate a lot of stuff i want you and, to be on my team and the, and one of the things they do in there is is at one point jughead goes like have you ever seen me without this hat that's weird <laughs> and like that is weird cuz he's literally always wearing it yeah it's 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 an interesting little show um i always took it as a as sort of a take on a jester cap Sort of, I guess, because he's but it's, like the class clown or whatever a in bit, the Archie's comics. But it looks it looks more like a crown almost, like yeah. a dark crown. 
Yeah, it's, it's just it's, they it's took weird. the balls off. Yeah. Like if there'd been balls hanging from each one of those. It also points. depends on who's drawing it, because sometimes it it has more of a droop to the yeah. the points. Like, and like sometimes it doesn't. They're straight up. So, yeah. um, well, we're, we're 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 coming towards the end here, but I did have something. Minutes. I did have something that I wanted to to bring up. A story I read last week. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's 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 very interesting story. I thought. And just lets us know how close we're getting to the future. So, ha- have you guys heard of Nightscope? No. Do you know what Nightscope is? Still no. Nightscope uh, is a company mm. that builds security robots. Okay. And yeah. these are like full, like five foot tall security robots. I'll put a link uh, with with the doodles today. Um, and they patrol malls and patrol areas and different things like that. And they don't actually engage. I was about to say, can it shoot me? Like, no, it, it can't shoot you, but it, it can record. R2-D2 taser? It, that would be awesome, but we're not there yet. <laughs> so I'm, uh, look, I'm looking at the picture of it over there on your iPad. It looks it like it, we're getting dangerous cl- dangerously close to like Daleks. Yes, it, it looks almost like yeah. a Dalek. Um, but these guys, like they're obviously incredibly expensive, mm-hmm. um, but they have a lot of different capabilities. They, they run with a little bit of AI. Um, well, just a few weeks ago... Um, one of these Nightscope security robots uh, in uh, the Washington Harbor shopping mall uh, drove itself right into a fountain. Awesome. And drowned itself in a fountain. It just couldn't take it anymore. It could not take it anymore. Much like a normal mall security guard. It it committed suicide. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And wanted like everybody to come in and see it in the morning. <laughs> So, I mean, obviously this thing is heavy as shit. Yeah. So they're trying to, like, drag this thing out of the water, and it is being very, very difficult because they have to do it delicately because obviously they have to send this thing back to get repairs. Mm. They don't want to bang it up too much. Um, It's already fucked, man. (laughs) It's already pretty fucked. It fell into water. It's done, which, you know, if that's the biggest flaw of our... Our of our security protocols that we're going to be Im- implementing in the future, I think, will be fine. Burglars <laughs> are just going to carry around buckets of water. Yeah, just dump the water and on it. And then just dump the day. water on it and keep walking. Um, but <laughs> the outpouring on Twitter and social media mm-hmm. about this robot drowning was hysterical. I bet. Uh, there was a lot of, of feedback about, uh, about, you know, Humanity won, Robot Zero, <laughs> but then there was, like, on the opposite end of the spectrum, people who are, you know, saddened and dismayed by the loss of this great robot. Um, so let's see here. Um, now, was, was there just one robot? It was just the one. I mean, not not just one that drowned itself, but there's only one? Uh, it's in that mall, I believe it was the okay. only one. All right. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> here's, here's one that came from uh, Bilal Faroqui on, uh, on Twitter. It said, our D.C. office building got a security robot. It drowned itself. We were promised flying cars. Instead, we get suicidal robots. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of where we are right now. Yeah. You know, we, we were expecting to have our flying cars, and we were expecting to have our robot maids, but it turns out you can't even have a robot that walks around and just looks at shit for 12 <laughs> hours a day function properly. <laughs> Maybe maybe it saw something in that in that fountain. It had to go check it out. Halt! Maybe it halt. was a reflecting pool, <laughs> and it was just like there is another robot here. I need to uplink with it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Fun fact: It was his last day before retirement. Mm-hmm. Was it really? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> but I thought it was an interesting story. You should have just said yes. Yeah. You should have yeah. just continued to lie to us. It yeah. would have been better for me and Dave and for the audience. Yeah. Well, it would have been better. It would have been better. Sometimes the truth isn't better. It's true. The truth <laughs> <Is> hurts. It? <laughs> <laughs> it hurts. So yeah. I saw. I watched another show recently on Netflix. Netflix original, actually. Uh, Friends from College. Okay. Have you yep. seen that? I've seen some bits of it. So I saw a little at Katie's. Yeah, it's it's a uh, a friend on on Facebook described it very accurately. Cringy as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 tough to watch it is and and there's some hilarious bits in it not not to say that it's not entertaining yeah because it is entertaining uh but it just makes you feel real weird inside real weird it's super awkward at times um but like really funny part keegan michael key Mm -hmm. uh fred savage yeah fred savage not being over the top yes is really weird 
But I, I thought he, he's been doing a fantastic yeah, job. Yeah. And Fred Savage, like, surprised the hell out of me. Like, yeah. he's been really, really funny. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's not that he never was funny. I just didn't expect him to be this funny. He's right. been off of the, the, out of the spotlight for a long yeah, time. Well, he's, he's been doing a lot of directing. Mm-hmm. And he, now he's getting back into acting. His acting career peaked in the Wonder Years, right? More or less, yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, he did have that small spot in Austin Powers Gold member. He's also in Wizard. I don't know that. Mm, with the glove, the power glove. Oh yeah, the Nintendo no. power glove. Oh wow. Nope. Yeah, you're young. Uh, <laughs> Jason, I remember Wizard just fine. Yeah. But yeah, he's been he's been doing a lot of direct. I think he's been directing Always Sunny a lot, hasn't he? Always Sunny in Philadelphia. That I think sounds he's right. Doing a lot of that. Yeah. Um, Him and probably Danny. I imagine Mr. Devito probably directs an occasional one. I don't know if he directs at all. No. No. Maybe I mean, he's got directing. Credits. I'm sure he does. Yeah, but he, I feel like Danny DeVito is at a point where he's like, "I'll just keep playing this character, and that's all I really want to do." Yeah. Yeah, I've, done, I've done my shit. I'm just gonna play this this uh, trumped up version of myself. Exactly. Yeah, it's kind of half me anyway. Yeah. So can I just stick with it? <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's only eight episodes though. I I literally finished it today. This pe- this friends from college. And, yeah, it's short, and it and it it ends. At a point where you're like, well, come on. They're not friends for like, we need to know. Anymore. We need to know what else is going to happen now. You, you know what else did that? It okay. was even shorter, and like it, it upset me because I didn't realize it. Hmm. Uh, Netflix had uh, a Castlevania. Yeah, Castlevania. Castlevania. It's an anime style, and right. I'm like, this looks interesting. Yep. I'm going to start watching it. One episode in, looks good. Two episodes in, I'm digging this. Yeah. Three episodes in, all right, now we're starting to get somewhere. Mm-hmm. Four episodes. Okay, perfect. Now we're getting to the yeah, action. It's about to happen. And Done. That's the end of the season. Four episodes. That's all you get. Yeah. It gets you just close enough. You're like, all right, now some shit's going to go down, right. except where it doesn't. Yeah, it's all built. Like the entire series, the entire first season is just built up. <laughs> first season, yeah. you are using that term loosely, my friend. Yeah. Uh, I would give it a, a snippet at best. You know, it's basically like two hours. Mm-hmm. Just a whole bunch of foreplay. Yeah. And Essentially, yeah. Except every, and it looks like really great foreplay. Like, it, I'm pretty you're sure going to keep foreplaying around. It's so good. Every episode is like an hour long or something. And it's still, it still feels so damn short. Yep. Like, you feel like, okay, well, this happened. And, okay, he met this person. And he's met this person. And, then, oh, we're done. Yep, all done. Like, that took four hours? <laughs> oh, uh... Before we go to touch on something from last episode, uh-huh. we uh, we got into a, a little bit with Mickey about LARPs, talking to Justin, kind yeah, of yeah. explaining LARPs a little bit. Well, I saw something on Facebook that a friend sent me, mm-hmm. uh, a link to augmented reality LARPing. So oh, two yeah. things that we've discussed in the past bridging together. <laughs> I like think Talkie Box put that made that happen. Yes, we probably did. Absolutely, yeah. we're very influential. <laughs> we have a lot of power. Um, so don't this, roll your eyes when you say so it. The, I, <laughs> that was a defining moment. <laughs> so this um, this guy blink. that owns Nero, and Nero is one of the big yeah. LARPing things. Like Nero has chapters all over the United States. Um, he got in bed with some group. Google will tell you. Possibly literally in bed. Yeah, possibly literally in bed with that, them. Yeah, conspiracy theory right there. And, I like it. And they have tried to, and they've been working on a feature for a while, but now smartphones are actually coming to the point of technology where you can actually har- hold like a bunch of data yeah. in your phone, and they have apps that you can hook up your different, your boffer weapons mm-hmm. to these apps and it will count the number of times that like you make contact with the other person. Okay. And if they're blocking with a another marked boffer weapon, right? Then it'll take away the blocked marks and mm-hmm. like. So, so if you hit way, them, you get a hit. If you don't, you, you know, it's blocked. And... Exactly. And so now you no longer like with our game. Uh-huh. You know, there's a hit point system. Right. And you have to do speed math really, really quickly. Yeah, in your head, you gotta, you gotta. Keep all that in check, and and it's very hard to be pinpoint accurate. Yeah, like there, there's very rarely a scenario where anything with a lot of hit points, and I'm saying over a hundred hit mm-hmm. points, is actually going to go down 
accurately in a large fight. Right. Because just trying to keep track of what that person called and what that person called. Uh, they even have markings for spells. Uh, no longer will you be throwing bird seed packets as we do. Mm -hmm. You will now have a wand that is just like a laser pointer okay. style device. And you will set it for what spell you have in your repertoire. <laughs> and then you point and cast. Right. And it will have area effect different statuses and stuff. Because yeah. it whoever it hits is your your explosion point. If it's a fireball, everybody within 10 feet of that guy takes X damage. Wow. And your phone, the app, like keeps track of all of these numbers and yeah. stuff. So I feel like you'd have to be connected to a server with all the data you, going you in. Would. There would have to be a hub Right for the the game, uh, so it had to be like some. But kind that sounds of like Wi-Fi Wi Fi device centralized to the state park or wherever you're at for this thing. Yeah, or you could and just then, create a, a hub. You know, a hub, a using hub. really good personal devices. I mean, I guess, but the, I mean, one everybody has to have a phone, which you not everybody to. does. You have to be willing to carry that phone on you all the time, which some I I typically don't when I'm when I'm out larping and stuff because I don't want to get broke. So well, and you'd have to have the peripherals. Yeah, and and the phone obviously you could just no peripherals get really good casing for it. Like yeah. you could just get some fucking ballistic casing and stuff like that, and it wouldn't be that big of an issue to protect a phone. So so it's it's technically it's making LARPing more expensive. It is making LARPing more expensive, but a whole lot more accurate because a lot of folks tend to stay away from buffer LARPing because they don't want to have to do that aspect of it. They don't yeah. want to have to track the numbers and they don't want to have to rely on other human beings being honorable in right. scenarios where sometimes they're not. Yeah, that's true. You know, like if you, if you know for a fact, like, oh, I assassinated that guy or mm. I hit this guy with a lightning bolt or whatever, and he turns and he just flat out says, no, you didn't. Yeah. What do you do? You beat him with the boffer stick. <laughs> I mean, well, but... You know. No, like, literally, turn it around, grab the soft spot, hit him with the handle a couple times across the head. And now you're the bad guy. Yeah, well, he pushed you to it. <laughs> well, he... And he now, wins. and now you own that. You become diabolical. You murder him in front of everybody. And, and then you go on the run. Right. <laughs> and you take LARPing to the next level, yeah. reality. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. Yeah, it's not yeah. live action role play. It's live, live, <laughs> live augmented reality <laughs> role play. LARP. Live Lar from Atlanta. <laughs> Cops. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I know don't, that but you don't. We could go on about LARPing for hours, and oh, just, we're out I of just, time. I just Far too to long. talk about that update. No, yeah, that's really cool, though. Augmented reality LARPing. Yeah. Lar. Well, we'll see how that progresses in future episodes. Mm -hmm. Um, so get your get your talkie mug, uh, talkiebox.net. Get your talkie clock. Talkie clock. Talkie your clock. Your clocky box. Clock. Clocky box. I like talkie clock. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. You can call it whatever you want when you buy it. Um, ooh, Chupacabra Kid. Clock. We're gonna have to end voting on that pretty soon, so that we can do the next episode. Yeah. yeah. So if you haven't checked out Chupacabra Kid at TalkieBox.net, do that. Uh, listen to it. We have first two episodes up. Vote for how you want the series to progress. And uh, we'll probably end that August 1st. Yeah, sure. Take it down. It's coming up soon. Uh, tell me how it ended, yeah. and I'll write the next one. There you go. And we'll record it and get it out there for you as soon as we can. And this time I won't try. I'll try to be a little less long-winded in the narration. Because <laughs> I noticed there was one part where, like, I think you drowned me out with howls. You just got, I may have. You just got so tired. <laughs> <listening> <laughs> <to> <laughs> it's, it's more, I got really, I got really into the, the sound <laughs> editing of these it. These coyotes are so badass, man. I gotta bring them up. I gotta bring up these coyotes. The chupacabra kid all right, well, check that out at TalkieBox.net. What did uh, you learn? Oh, shit. Uh, shit. I learned shit. that uh, I don't have much of an opinion about conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, oh, things happen and I don't care. Justin Bobby. What did you learn? What did I learn? Uh, that, Quick, uh, we're out of time. Yeah, well, we all, we've all we been out of time. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I, I learned that uh, the future is upon us. 
and uh, and apparently there is more expensive things that uh, that Jason can get behind. Uh, and if if he gets this stuff and it really gets implemented, he's likely to buy a smartphone just for this LARPing. Right. Future is upon us, not a penis. Uh, what did I learn? Uh, Jughead of the future <laughs> wears a uh, a hemp cap. <laughs> More or less, yeah. Yep. There you have it. All right. Have a great night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.